there's a whole bunch of these tasty blueberries all around me. So when we saw him earlier, he was right in that drainage. Kyle here with Wicked Alaska, and today we're on a four-wheeler heading up the mountain. The side-by-sides have a much wider wheelbase than my four-wheeler, so I have to kind of like ride off to the side of them. It's pretty intimidating coming into some of these big holes without ever running them before. Who knows if they're going to be super deep and I'm going to be spending half the day getting a four-wheeler unstuck. somebody's camp. Pretty cool spot. Starting to get up above tree line and it's uh it's all opening up quite a bit. This is going to be a good place for me to stop and take a quick bathroom break and look through the binoculars a little bit to see what I see out in front of me up the hill. So I see one black bear and he's about 3,000 plus yards away. My rangefinder is topping out at like 2,500 yards and I would just guess that he's about 500 to 1,000 yards beyond where I'm able to laze. You get a little closer and see what angle this trail puts me at. I've never been on this trail before so I have no idea where it's actually taking me. I'm just trying to head uphill to get out and above the trees, get to a good glassing spot and then figure it out from there. Let's go on this side of it. trails they're custom cut through the grass and they lead to some steeper hills that I don't really want to be climbing by myself out here so I'm gonna come back and hit the main trail. It's a pretty gorgeous morning. All right we're a little bit closer now. Still a couple thousand yards out. 1,500 yards out. I see a different bear. And maybe an accessible spot. Still pretty far to approach because I gotta go down this hill and then up again. But uh, he's in a, a little spot where there's some waterfalls, and so it'd be kind of an easy spot to re-identify from a different location. So I'm gonna keep getting closer and see what I can see. That's gonna be fun getting back up. <laughs> the trail turned into a bit of a river. We are way up here. Those hill climbs, those still on the four-wheeler, will get your blood pumping a bit. I would say the tie-down job wasn't exceptional, but did the trick. Nothing shook loose. I'm gonna just gear up and walk from here. We have so much elevation already, and with having seen a couple bears up top, I wanna start creeping around a little bit more than driving. I feel like 
when you're on the wheeler, you're paying attention to where you're going and not where the animals are or looking around and missing a lot of things, I'm sure. Having just uh, turned the four-wheeler off, we were just previously making some noise. I kind of want to th have things settle down a little bit. Um, the bear that I saw that was previously 1,500 yards away is now only about three or so hundred yards from where I saw him. He's not there right now, but that spot's uh, kind of wooded around it. So I'm going to pick some berries and wait to see if he pops back out after it's been quiet for a while. Got this big line of trees and bush between us and the spot. And uh, luckily, there's a whole bunch of these tasty blueberries all around me. So I'm gonna pick some berries. These blueberries are uh, what make the bears up here taste so good in the fall. If you get a bear down by a salmon river, the meat is definitely gonna taste pretty fishy. People call them salmon bears and uh, they don't get a good reputation. However, berry bears, ones in the fall up in the Alpine, they've been eating berries all fall. They've got this thick berry fat, almost blue tinted fat on them. And uh, that is what makes the bear taste super good. Plus you can render that fat down and use it as uh, cooking oil. This is a little difficult one-handed. It's not super efficient. So uh, I'm gonna put the camera down and Okay, I've uh, collected some berries. Only about five or 10 minutes worth. Um, I'm gonna leave some air in the bag. I'm gonna put this back in my backpack and uh, hike around a little bit. And uh, I'll stop to a uh, glass in a spot where there's more berries so that I can pluck away as I wait and look. So when we saw him earlier, he was right in that drainage. I'm not super motivated to go in there by myself. Um, I think the best thing to do right now is just to wait and wash and see where he pops out and hope he pops out low and in a uh, range that's shootable. So I'm gonna just hang out for a little bit and see what happens. Looks like a pretty great spot to lean up against. Got this nice shady tree. It's looking right up at the hillside. We'll uh, hang out here for a little while and see what we see. So I've been hanging out here for about an hour now and uh, I haven't seen any movement at all. Tough to tell if uh, the bear's still in this area or not because there's a lot of avenues for the bear to move out undetected. Um, what I did notice is though, sitting right next to me, is a ton of watermelon berries. So I'm going to pick a bunch of those while I wait a little bit longer. If you're looking for watermelon berries, you can find them in the shade, typically up in the alpine. All right, I grabbed some berries from this spot and uh, I think it's time to jump on the four-wheeler and move to a different spot on the ridge and uh, also not neglect looking downhill of us because we're pretty high up right now and we're definitely in where the bear bears would hang out and uh, I'm also looking for a moose, so keep an eye out for them.
pretty tough to be able to see a bear from up here. A lot of the grass is five feet high and uh, there's a lot of mixed in bushes and alders. And so uh, they really have to step out right into the open for me to be able to pick them up. Otherwise, if they're staying pretty low and in the tree line, it's gonna be hard. About a mile straight uphill, it turns more into a lichen and rocky top, which animals stick right out on. Super easy, and there's not really much place for them to hide once once they're up that high, they're kind of exposed for a while, but there's a lot of berries up there. Um, I'm just gonna hope one maybe pops out and heads downhill towards me. I have about an hour left and then I gotta get going. I just remembered I had another egg and sausage burrito. Definitely uh, coming in handy right now as I'm sitting and waiting. Maybe the smell of Jimmy Dean sausage will attract an animal. Well, this place was pretty sweet. It was a fun adventure to get to the spot anyway. Um, didn't produce, but we still have a long ways downhill, and uh, so I'm going to go pretty slow and uh, see what we see. This hill was a fun one coming up. Let's see how fun it is going down. worked out well. I thought that was going to be a lot tougher. This is pretty interesting. Since I came up, a bird had died and landed right in the middle of the trail. bird. I don't know what it is, but it's a pretty cool looking bird. Coming down the trail and now we uh, have run into different berries. They are currants and there sure is a lot of them. Starting to get quite the little sack of berries here. Looks like we found a really old tree stand made out of a pallet. Having good binoculars is a good and a bad thing. Uh, super good because obviously you can see anywhere and as far as you can possibly imagine. But then bad because when you see something and you say, oh yeah, let's go there, you realize that it's like about three miles away even though it looks really close in the binoculars. If you want to see more Alaskan adventure videos like this, 
subscribe to the YouTube channel Wicked Alaska. See you on the trail.